Hello there, my fellow Eastern enthusiasts, and welcome back to some Warhammer Fantasy lore. Previously, I finally introduced to the channel a faction that recently rose to prominence in Warhammer Fantasy. Predominantly, of course, because of Total War Warhammer 3. That faction is Grand Cafe, and hopefully you already enjoyed the first video I made on them. Today we're gonna talk about everyone's favorite topic, armies and military. More precisely, the armies, and for today, some of the infantry of Cathay. Now, while a lot of the units we're gonna describe today and in future episodes have only been recently fleshed out, or simply come into existence because of the game, there are some which are still quite unique and worth talking about. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The armies of Cafe are exceptionally powerful, but then again they have to be, because the Cafeans fight not only against rampaging hobgoblins, chaos marauders and jungle primitives, but also against the might of Nippon. The north of Cafe is protected from the attacks of the Hung tribes by the Great Bastion, a massive wall stretching for hundreds of miles and large enough to require a garrison in the tens of thousands. The armies of Cathay are said to be innumerable and draw exotic warriors from all across the realm, including fierce hill people, strange warrior monks, and well-disciplined armies supported by heavily armored warriors and ornate cannonry. The mainstay of the Grand Army of Cathay are the numerous bannermen, oath-sworn and stalwart warriors which wear emerald green back banners, wield long curved swords, wicked pole arms and crossbows, and are famous for standing their ground however badly outnumbered. The Dragon Emperor's bodyguard, also known as the Palace Guard, is known to wear lacquered scale armor and to display banners with dragon motifs. Small notice here, I'm not entirely certain if these Palace Guard are a separate unit, or they were just retconned into the game's Celestial Dragon Guard. Figured that was worth mentioning so you don't say I'm spreading false news. Before the coming of their great Maw God, the Cafeans would pass the Secret of Fire to the nomadic tribes of the Ogres, and in return recruit the more intelligent Ogres into the Grand Imperial Army. Nowadays, the so-called Ogre Man-Eaters can fight as mercenaries in the Empire of Cathay, which leads them to wear fine cloth under lacquered bamboo armor and wield finely balanced Cathayan longswords. Master-crafted blades which are of great value to the Ogres because they will remain eternally sharp. With the strength of an ogre behind them, the blades can cause a hell of a mess. Gunpowder technology is known in Cafe, and it is used in ornate snarling-mouthed bronze cannons which shoot clusters of bronze javelins, and in enchanted fireworks of lambent green and ice-white light, which turns the night into a rippling phantasm of spectral figures which turn and roar in a crazy display. The Cathayan Navy is known to patrol the Far Sea. Comprising of life warjunks and powerful turtle ships, they protect the coast from the enemies of the Empire. Cathayan warriors, or at least their officers, will study military treatises, such as Tzu Sun, and learn acrobatic martial arts to some degree. But the armies of the Dragon Emperor contain more esoteric forces too. During the Chaos Invasion of Cathay in the year 1311, hordes of Chaos Warriors battled legions of terracotta automatons, attempting to shore up the Sundered Bastion with their own clay bodies. Mutated war mammoths gored and trampled entire units of ogres, and in the skies above, demon princes dueled with bejeweled golden dragons. Some heroes ride the Kirin, unicorn-like creatures that ride storms and sport lightning manes. Records of travelers tell of the mystic brotherhoods of monks who can kill you with a touch of their hand, and of strange monkey warriors living in the mountains of heaven. There are also statues of living stone, similar to the Nehekaran Ushapti, in the shape of guardian stone dogs and flying crow men. The Dragon Emperor is also said to command the giant water snakes of extraordinary speed as pets. Cathayan units are mixed between yin and yang, following the two main laws of magic used in the nation. Yin units are better at raining barrages to stop the enemy from getting close, while yang units 
are skilled in striking back in the melee way. For the rest of today's episode, I wanted to go into a bit more detail on the main melee infantry of Cathay. There's not a lot of them, but what they do, they do pretty well. And they're very clearly split by power scaling. The backbone of the Grand Cathayan armies are the people, and they are numerous beyond count. While the Celestial Dragon Emperor is wise and his children are benevolent leaders to the people under their command, they understand with the detachment of immortality that the one thing they will always have is more bodies. More men and women to man the battlements, more fighters to hold the line, more defenders to make the forces arrayed against them fight for every inch of ground. Thus, the least trained armies of Grand Cafe are still a power to be reckoned with via sheer force of numbers. Unlike the hired soldiers or lower classes of other factions, the warriors of Wind and Field, as they are known, feel a fierce loyalty to their cause and the dragons watching over them. They may buckle and even break, but they know their job. Like all melee units, the peasant long spearmen, because that's what we're talking about, belong in the discipline of Yang. This increases their leadership and defense when in close proximity to a Yin unit. These ranks of the Grand Cafean armies are expendable, and expected to flee from battle when facing more than they can handle. Finishing those fights is the work of more disciplined troops. Thus we arrive at the Jade Warriors, the basic professional line troops of Great Cathay. They are the standing army, expertly trained, highly disciplined, and well equipped to defend against ogres, rebels, chaos marauders, or any other threat to the Grand Empire. They are famous for their training and discipline, able to stand their ground even when heavily outnumbered by the enemy. Each city maintains its own regiments of jade warriors, and few live outside one of the great metropolises dotting the landscape of Grand Cathay. In times of war, they will go into battle armed in many ways, known collectively as the Jade and Steel Warriors. The military doctrine of Cathay focuses on ranged firepower to destroy the enemy, but the Jade Warriors are capable of holding the line and also defeating enemies who deem them weak in close quarters. They will fight in orderly and disciplined ranks, as they have learned to move in harmony with those around them, often resulting in the army fighting as a single entity under the proper direction of a general. While Cafe also has powerful magic and giant war machines, they are less present in their armies than other factions, and rely more heavily on their numerous irregulars. Wizards are a valuable and important commodity. While the construction required for a Sky Lantern or War Compass may be beyond the poorer cities. The name Jade Warriors was given to them in honor of a sacred stone to the Dragon Emperor, representing the unforgiving nature of the realm. Last but not least, Grand Cafe's elite soldiers are officially the Legion of the Dragon Emperor, loyal defenders, also known as the Celestial Dragon Guard, at least in the game. As the Eastern Empire was expanding, more and more Dragon Guard have been added to the Celestial Host, which now numbers enough that they can be dispatched to battlefields all over the East. Their arrival represents an exponential increase in power for any army, not least for the morale boost it gives the soldiers to see such a direct connection to the Emperor. Wielding halberds, they are natural opponents to the armored and the massive, as capable of spearing a monster from the Chaos Wastes as they are to unseat a man from a horse. However, as they are the most well-trained units in Grand Cafe, they are capable of defending against pretty much anything, from the sneakiest Skaven to the most brutal Cornate Marauder. The Dragon Guard is superior to their brothers in the Jade Warriors regiments in every single way except of course their number, which is lower. In addition to their natural ability, they have the best equipment Cafe can provide, such as the heavenly swords forged in Kun Lan. The presence on the battlefield of the regiments of the Dragon Emperor's Guard personally guarantees victory for the Cafeans and gives a lot of courage to the rest of the army. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the armies and infantry of Grand Cafe for today. Obviously, this will not be the only video I make on the armies of Cathay, and next time, whenever that's gonna be, we're gonna tackle their ranged soldiers and varied artillery and war machines. 
so you're in for a lot of firepower if you stay tuned. Other than that, what are your thoughts on the armies of Cathay? Anything else you know about them that I didn't mention? What do you think are their greatest strengths and weaknesses? As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed the episode, do consider leaving a like, share and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot, and Sigmar's blessings be upon you.